Hello, welcome to worship and Merry Christmas. What a special night we have. I don't know what time of day it is that you're watching our online service, but we're intending it to be a Christmas Eve service. We've got all four of our colored Advent candles lit because the waiting is over. We've lit the white candle in the center because Christ is born. Thanks be to God. Our key verse today comes from Luke chapter 2, verse 13b. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. So we're celebrating with the angels tonight, we're celebrating with the shepherds, we're celebrating with the whole world that, Je that Jesus Christ is born. May you be blessed by this worship service, and again, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. My name is Christina. Thank you for joining us in worship tonight. Our first gospel lesson comes from Luke chapter two, verses one through seven. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in the bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place in the guest room. Please join me in the opening prayer. God of joy, we come tonight to celebrate. Your gift of salvation is bright enough to illuminate the darkest sky. Your gift of love is big enough for the whole world. Your gift of grace reaches even those the world often overlooks. Draw us to the manger tonight. Draw us to you. Amen.
gospel lesson is Luke chapter 8, verses 8 through 20. Now in that same region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in the bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. And Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told them. I've been thinking about these words, Gloria in excelsis Deo. No, no, it's Gloria in excelsis Deo. Right, what Nick said, Gloria in excelsis Deo. I've got a lot of twang in my voice, so I have a hard time saying it in the formal way choir directors always want us to. They always want us to pronounce the vowels as if they contain some deep theological truth, which in this case, they do. Gloria in excelsis Deo means glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. That's important stuff. The word glory comes from the Hebrew Shekinah, which is an Old Testament word that means presence of God. In ancient times, the Hebrew people looked to the heavens for God's presence. They looked for the pillar of fire by night and the cloud by day. I can imagine the multitude of angels in the sky on Christmas night. They probably glowed just like the Old Testament pillar of fire. God's glory was shown in the gloria of the angels in the sky. So I think it's okay that I pronounce that word with too much ooh or o. Oh. Gloria. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest. Can you picture that Gloria? Luke tells us that the angels were bringing good news of great joy for all the people. All of the people, that's us too. There were shepherds out in the fields watching their flocks by night. And the shepherds were very much afraid when they saw the angels. The angel said to them, fear not for I bring you good news, good news of great joy which shall be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This shall be a sign for you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with that angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, hundreds of thousands of angels together singing. <laughs> sing? To announce to the whole world that God had sent the Messiah, a Savior for everyone. At first, the shepherds did not understand. After all, they were shepherds. They weren't perceived to be religious all-stars. Since their job involved being out with the sheep all the time, they didn't get to worship every week, that's for sure. In fact, 
they were hardly able to keep any of the important Jewish customs. Shepherds were often looked down on by their fellow Jews. So it's no surprise that the shepherds did not understand right away that the Christ child was born for them. Luke tells us that at first, the shepherds did not sing the Gloria. It wasn't until they came to the manger and could see for themselves that they could really rejoice. They found Mary and Joseph and the baby, and they told the story of what had happened to them. Everyone was amazed. A savior for me, for us. Once they knew Jesus was God's gift for their very own, the Bible goes on to say that then the shepherds went home glorifying God and singing. <laughs> To God in the highest? The words are strange, but let's not let the message get lost in translation. Those singing angels are for us. They are God's invitation for us to come and see for ourselves the Savior born in Bethlehem. Glowing, the glowing presence of God can become our song. The glow from the sky becomes the glowing fire of God within each of us. When there is a Gloria in your heart, then you can begin to sing the Gloria with your life. Testament, and one of the recurring themes is the kingdom of God. Jesus' birth signaled the start of a whole new kingdom reigning over the world. This change is still in progress, but one day Christ will come again, and there will be no more tears, no more suffering, no more injustice or pain or strife of any kind. Until that day comes, we are invited to join with God in this kingdom building work. But Jesus came as a baby to show us that transforming the world starts with something very personal. It starts in our hearts. Some 400 years ago, Martin Luther wrote the following words, of what benefit would it be to me if Jesus would have been born a thousand times and it would have never and it would have been sung daily in my ears that Jesus Christ was born, but that I was never to hear that Jesus was born for me. It's not enough to have the Gloria sound in our ears. We need to have it resonate deep within us. We can celebrate Christmas year after year, but if we never realize that the gift of Jesus is for us personally, as well as for the whole world, we miss the key to Christmas. We miss the peace the angels came to announce. I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss out on that peace. Even as we are gathered here tonight for this special holiday, our problems are never far away from us. We need that glowing presence of, glow, glowing of God's presence deep within us. Immersed in the magic of Christmas Eve, it's easy to sing that we have indeed heard those angels. But sometimes it's hard to remember that God is with us and that God is always at work for good in us. Our circumstances can really challenge our faith. The shepherds had a hard job and lived during a very hard time. They may have often felt far away from God. But on that first Christmas, the angel came to them with good news of great joy. 
that God is with us. God is for us, no matter what. The shepherds went home with a song, and it can, reminds us that we too can go home with a song. We can glow with the presence of God, not just on Christmas Eve, but all year through, good days and bad, because God is with us. And so the song of Gloria doesn't just help us to glow with the presence of God. The song the angels sang becomes the glue that binds us to the truth of God's presence. I know it sounds terrible to sing Gloria, but no matter how much that might bother our ears, those vowel sounds do convey a deep theological truth. God sent his son so that we might glow with the presence of God within us. And God sent his son so that we might always be glued to our faith. Like the Virgin Mary, we have never experienced a love like this before. God sent his son so that we could glow in and be glued to God's perfect and forever love. Glory to God in the highest, yes. But there's more glory in God than can be held in the highest heavens. God's glory extends all the way down to earth. It is at work to redeem the whole world. But it's not just a universal love. It's a personal love as well. God's glory wants to rest right here in each of us. So one more time, let's listen to the Gloria and Excelsis Deo and hear it deep within our hearts. Amen. <laughs>
Humanitarian relief and recovery is at the core of Global Ministries' work. The United Methodist Committee on Relief was founded more than 80 years ago in response to the devastation caused by the Second World War. Today, our efforts to alleviate human suffering include disaster response, support of refugees and migrants, and efforts to increase environmental sustainability and decrease food insecurity. This work is collaborative work involving the church, partners, volunteers, caseworkers, and counselors ready to serve all in need, regardless of nationality or race, faith or status. benediction tonight, I'd like to read you a Christmas poem. Each line starts with the letters that spell out the word Christmas. C is for the Christ child, Jesus was his name. H is for heaven, his home before he came. R is for redeemer, born in a stable dim. I is for the inn that had no room for him. S is for the star, showing us the way. T is for the tidings the shepherds heard that day. M is for the mother of the child with the halo bright. A is for the angels who came in shining light. S is for Savior, the one God sent that night. Thanks be to God for the gift of his son. May we rejoice with the shepherds. May we sing Gloria our whole lives long. Go in peace and serve your Lord. Amen. <laughs>